2017 also NTA or properly understood as bad loans, money which is not coming back. That has been the major problem confronting the banking industry during the entire 2017. Maybe in the government, private public sector banks, private banks, foreign banks, all have been suffering. And that is because the government is not giving proper attention to this serious problem. So last year, the beginning of the year, around 6 lakhs crores. And today it has come to up. even according to government admission, it is more than 9 lakh crore. According to All India Bank Appraisal Association, it is around 15 lakh crore. Many loans are not being shown as bad loan, but month after month, quarter after quarter, the bad loan has been increasing. And that is indicative of the ineffective measures the government is taking to recover this bad loan, which is a serious problem and menace in the banking industry. Uh, I think government has set up certain mechanisms for resolution of the bank loans in terms of insolvency proceedings. How well are they working? No, the government, see, apparently people feel the government is doing something to recover the money. See, number one, middle of the year, they brought an ordinance saying that we shall be invoking the insolvency and bankruptcy court. So many people thought well, it's a very tough measure, so government is very tough on the defaulting borrowers and money will come back. But very soon, uh, we have been pointing out that it is not so, and very soon it has come to the line. So in 12 accounts only, 2 lakh 13 thousand crores was involved, and people thought the money will come. But immediately, following that ordinance, the Reserve Bank told the banks, no, you are not going to get the money, uh, so you have to provide more on this account, you have to have a deep haircut. So a new thing came in banking, that haircut. So all banks had to provide suddenly, and that's why you will find in uh, Q2, Q3, many banks have gone uh, recorded losses. So that means this is not a machinery or mechanism to recover the money. On the other hand, it is only to help the corporate people. Intention is that to recover the money. But because of this insolvency, all these big people companies, they will pay, they will end up in paying little amount and then they will escape out of that. And there also, again, the government said, even this defaulter himself can take back that uh, company by uh, in participating in the bidding or the auction. So we pointed out from the AIBA that they're ridiculous. And so again, they said, no, 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 we will not permit uh, the willful defaulters to participate. Uh, because there was one company, Dure company, they had taken 940 crores of loan from bank. And then bank, uh, because of this uh, non-repayment, non-repayment, they went for the company law tribunal. Ultimately, they landed up uh, uh, in a situation where hardly 54 crores was awarded by the tribunal. And that also, that bidding was done by another uh, subsidiary company of the same uh, defaulter. So the money, I mean, uh, with 54 crores, they could wipe out their uh, liability of 950 crores. That was hardly 6%. Point is, for a small amount, all the big loan uh, defaulters, big fishers, they will escape. And that's why you will find that instead of bank telling that I am going to take uh, this insolvency petition on you, they are telling, please take action on me. What does it mean? I mean, it's an easy route for them to escape. And that is itself is an indication how this whole, uh, this uh, what they call IBC, insol insolvency bankruptcy code, the proceeding against the uh, people, it, it's a bogus thing. And by end of March 2008, this financial, banks are going to have a very serious problem because of the government's action on this issue. See, hanking means we are giving loan. That's a risk. That's why there is so many other uh, protective provisions uh, when uh, banks are doing this banking business. So in anything, any business, there'll be some loss. So in bank, when we give 100 loans, Maybe two, three, four loans may go bad for various reasons. So that's okay. Uh, then banks are aware of that. But here, uh, it, it, it has become an exclusive art to cheat the bank, take the loan, cheat the bank has become a profession now. Many people are doing that. That's number one. Number point is, question you are asked about viability. The point is, up to a limit, it, it is bearable. In, internationally, 2%, <coughs> 3% of the bad loan, it is bearable. We can manage, but today it is going 14%, 15% in IDBA bank in terms of quantum, it is 50,000 crores and almost 25%. So this is a risk that our banks are facing and for that the money has to be recovered. 
But because the loans are struck up to this great extent, the point is that banks are not able to further business because there is an erosion in the capital adequacy ratio. First of all, uh, this public sector bank, this capital adequacy ratio, uh, uh, per se, they are not to be made applicable at all because there is a government guarantee. So, where is the question of uh, capital? Even if the banks uh, don't have capital, people will believe government bank. That's another issue. Point is that because the bad loans are increasing, government, the bank's capital is coming down. And now, a lot of pressure. In fact, last year in the Nyan Sangam, government said, FM said, that we'll give capital only for the performing banks, whereas we need uh, medicine for the sick child. So some banks are not doing well, we need capital. So we had to go on strike on the 28th of February. Then later that government reviewed, and now they said we'll give to all the banks. That's one. Now they said that we will give 2,11,000 crores of capital uh, for the bank. So it's a big news. Everybody is very uh, cheerful. Oh, government is at last going to give money. But there is also an eyewash. Point is, out of 2,11,000 crores of capital, only 18,000 crores will come from the government coffers from the budget. And that also, already 11,000 crores they announced in the Nyan Sangha. So additional 7,000. So 18,000 will be direct. Uh, contribution by the government in equity capital. Another 58,000 crores, it has to be raised by the bank themselves by going to the market. That means banks have, to that extent, banks' capital will be privatized. This is one agenda of the government to privatize the banks. Now, in the name of giving capital, they are forcing the banks to go private. So, to that extent, there will be dilution of government capital. It, it's a definite move towards privatization of the bank's capital. So, 58,000 crores. And that too, no market is not okay. And banks, when they are not doing well, who will uh, buy the shares of the banks? So, maybe they have to go for a discount. So, th th that's not a proper route. The third balance sum on 1,35,000 crores. From where it will come? They say we'll give recap bonds. That means the banks first have to invest money in the government. The same money will come back to the bank and recap bank. So it is not that government is giving 2,11,000 crores. So if some tough measures are taken to recover the loan, even if 20% of the bad loans are recovered, that is enough for the capitalization of the banks. So that is the route. Because either government has to give or internally banks should generate. All along banks have been generating their own capital from profit. No, profits are not there, there is loss because of bad loan. Banks are the uh, machines where, through which government can pressurize the banks to give loan for all sec development sectors. That is quite okay. There is nothing wrong. Government must direct the banks to give more and more loan for needy sector. Maybe agriculture, maybe employment generation, maybe poverty reduction, maybe rural development, maybe women empowerment. Government has to even industrial development. Nothing wrong. The point is that why do you, uh, I mean, make the banks to give loan and then blame them? And now, lastly, uh, the, the question what asked, the viability. Because of bad loan, uh, because of erosion in capital, because banks are not able to make enough profit, uh, the viability is a question. That's why banks are totally viable. All banks are making operating profit. They are doing good business and they can do further business. There is nothing to worry about our own banks. They are quite safe. The only problem, bad loan, if government can recover the, help us to recover the money, things will be quite fine. Indian banking system is one of the most effective, very positive, vibrant banking system. But for the minus point, the bad loan for which the corporate big, big defaulters are mainly, they are the contributors, they are responsible. Government must take action on them. See, first of all, FRDI bill is not required for India and this is not the time. Based on the United States of America experience in Lehman Brothers 2008 and arising out of IMF recommendation, G20 decision, etc. and also the prescriptions of the Financial Stability Board, that is applicable for Western Bank where it is mostly investment oriented banks. So investors have to take care of the bank. Here it is run by depositors. And simply telling, I will bring the same cut and paste uh, FRDI bill in India. It is ill-timed and uh, it, actually people are questioning the motive because once certain people are afraid, if you bring a bill which is having a bail-in clause, bail-in clause must come where the investor has uh, kept his money 
when profit is there he will enjoy when loss is there he will uh, take care of that but here innocent people they keep the money uh, for their future need for their uh, monthly income etc so they are not to be treated like the investor they are not investors they are savers so this distinction is there thoughtlessly the government has brought the bill and they are also see there are two parts number one you keep your money in the bank the go manage government must uh, guarantee the money number two and now government says in bail in investors will have to take care then what about the people who have taken the money whether malia has any responsibility whether ruya has any responsibility whether uh, this uh, video con all these people have taken money so they will escape only the innocent people they have to bail in so the concept is not applicable to india in fact we must make the borrowers responsible the now government is telling don't worry about your thing there is a provision in 19 up to 1960 banks were not protected at all because banks were getting close and people were losing money so at that time uh, comrade prabhatkar who was the general secretary of my all india bank employees association he was a member of parliament from the communist party of india he raised the issue in the parliament that how long this will go on now now people are losing money so do something make some law so section 454 was added to the banking companies act at that time and so because of this regulation reserve bank was empowered if a bank is in problem they will put that bank in moratorium it will be taken over by another bank that's why in the last from 1960 in almost uh, uh, 40 plus uh, 70 57 years banks have collapsed the reserve bank said it is no good but that has been not closed people have not lost a single naya paisa that bank have been taken over point is why do you bring the bill and the threatened people create problem for them that's our point it, we are not afraid that because of frdi bill government can close any bank or people will lose the money that's not the point you see in india it, the psychology is very important that too when they are afraid uh, that money is not coming back what happened to my saving you are bringing a wrong bill at a wrong time and creating this panic situation government was first withdraw the whole bill and how that g20 recommendation can be implemented in india context that can be discussed how borrowers can be made responsible they are the people who are responsible for the mess the banks are facing not the depositors and in fact if this is so already there is a trend many people quietly silently we are experience in the banks common people they are withdrawing the money they are withdrawing the money from the bank mean deposit will come down if deposit will come down banks cannot give loan if banks cannot give loan what happened to development what happened to vikas what happened to progress already in india the gdp bank uh, loan ratio is hardly 47% it must go to 80 90 100 percent india if india has to develop banks have to give loan and people keep money and we don't give loan so it is not productive so it's a cycle economy and banking immediately frdi bill must be withdrawn and then the government must say that section 454 of the banking regulation act will apply no bank will be closed automatically it will be taken over by another bank nothing to worry government must immediately restore the confidence of the people in the banking system a new generation mobile banking technology digital all these are okay but it is a phased manner now india is not ready for that still we are a cash oriented economy so disturbing the cash flow was an unwise decision and it has not resulted in uh, eradicating uh, any element of black money black money will continue black money is not in only in cash black money is in uh, so many ways so government could not do anything in fact you unnecessarily created this problem and uh, people have even suppose the entire money has come that means some black money has come in and we are giving interest on that black money it was idle it was not earning anything so i i don't know it, it's it's very ridiculous that you have brought some money and you are incurring expenditure that has not helped at all it has completely disturbed the rural economy the retail trade the small people people are now afraid to hold cash uh, uh, and even even now another point is that banks are still having shortage of cash because reserve bank has not printed enough particularly the small denomination notes so banks are facing problem customers are facing problem thousands of atms are still immobile they are just shopies and what do you talk of digital banking first kindly make all your atms work 
This sloganeering alone will not take the country forward. But unfortunately, our government believes in slogans. But reality is, and the ground is completely different. I don't think uh, uh, any, anything uh, positive has happened because of demonetization. Only problems have come. Not only people have suffered. Even now, economy is still uh, suffering on account of that. Of course, bank employees have suffered. Even though our legitimate overtime, many banks have not paid. And even banks have incurred huge expenditure. Government does not reimburse that. We are all going to have the impact maybe this year also. So that's the story of demonetization. It was a thoughtless action.